in the LFL. Eight teams and over 200 athletes began the 2018 season with one goal. On this day, a select few will take the next step toward that goal. They will be tested emotionally, mentally, and physically. Two teams will get the opportunity to continue on the path of greatness, while two others will be forgotten. The Western and Eastern Conference Championships, Los Angeles, Austin, Chicago, and Nashville. Each game would have its own storylines. The day would begin with the Western Conference Championship, which would include two teams that took separate paths to this stage. A team that struggled without its leader would get her back when it counted most. I'm sorry I couldn't be here for this season, but you know, you guys still worked your ass off and look, look where we are now. Yeah, we have the chance tonight to show everyone that we can fucking ball, you guys. Honestly, this sport is about having fun, about playing as a team, and showing some fucking passion, all right? Yeah. So when we go out there, we're going to leave it out on the field. Mistakes or not, whatever, it doesn't matter. Fucking flush that play, get on to the next play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happens in the past in this game, you have to have a short-term memory. Flush that shit. One of your teammates fucks up, bring them up. Make it up for them. We're here as a fucking family. Not being able to be there for my team was really hard for me. Um, you know, I lead that team, and... I love those girls, so knowing that they were struggling without me was really hard. For the Austin Acoustic, this is a team that has been a number one seed in the Western Conference throughout the regular season. They are as solid as it gets at the number one seed. We play with each other and for each other and for the girls back home, for every girl who came before us, for every girl who's been here since day one, for everyone in this room, all the coaches, all the staff, we play for the Acoustic. One team has a storied history, while the other has shown the greatest turnaround in LFL history. The league's most exciting offense would draw first blood. Winfrey back to pass, quick screen. That's Marshall, and Marshall getting into the end zone for the first touchdown of the Western Conference Championship. Rolling left, now cutting back Winfrey. Avoiding the rush, a jump pass. That is caught. Touchdown, Austin. Los Angeles now down 13 to nothing. And you can see the concern on the face of Tui Sui Noah. Los Angeles would come unraveled. No, hey, bitch, not your life. Not your fucking life. You don't want to come this way, baby girl. However, Los Angeles championship DNA would lead them to rally. One. And that's caught. Sherry Awaga, an 18-yard connection. Salerno from the shotgun, handing it off to the F-150. When you see Ashley running an offense, the entire team feeds off that. And that's complete. Christina Cigar Minaga, touchdown Los Angeles. Los Angeles gets right back in this game. Like a shark that smells blood in the water, the temptation kept coming. Previous Austin teams would roll over in the face of adversity, but the 2018 Acoustic have a different destiny. That's forced and intercepted. The Robinson interception would prove to be a turning point as the Austin offense and the offensive player of the year, Leilani Lopez, would take over. That LA defense, they look confused right now. Austin has them on their heels. They're the second ranked defense in the LFL. They're not playing like it tonight. Winfrey lofting it into the end zone. Touchdown, Cassandra Bills. So Mike Oliveira and the Austin Acoustic will lead this one 19 to nine at halftime. Despite the Austin lead at halftime, you could sense the urgency in both locker rooms. So I'm telling you right now to go out and play 20 minutes for the rest of your life and it will be there, I promise. They're all hyped up right now because they think they got this shit. What they don't realize is there's another half to football. The stage was set for the final 20 minutes of football to decide who would represent the Western Conference in Legends Cup 2018. Down by 10. 
the Temptation offense, and Naz Johnson would start the second half on fire. Ed Johnson is gone. You can see the fire in Naz Johnson right now. That is the spark this Los Angeles team really needs. Los Angeles offense delivered. Now it was time for the defense to show the old silver and black pride. One of the reasons Los Angeles is the second ranked defense in the league is that size and prowess against the run. Second and goal again. Salerno calling her own number and getting in the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. If I was Austin, I'd be very worried right now. Over the middle, caught. Touchdown, Los Angeles. We don't get that ball back, game's over, guys. Los Angeles will attempt an onside kick down two. This is Los Angeles' season on the line. The next play would shape the future of both franchises. For Los Angeles, a loss means the end of an era. For Austin, an onside kick recovery gives them the team's biggest win in history. This will be Lily Cranston with the onside kick. What a job by Lopez to field that ball. You know, I'm really happy for these ladies. They, they worked their tail off. They came back from 0-4 and, and just worked and worked and worked. I wanted everything for them. Great job to them. The Austin Acoustic will head home and play in Legends Cup 2018. As the Austin Acoustics celebrated their improbable win, everyone's attention turned toward perhaps the most anticipated game of the 2018 season. While everyone knew who would be representing the Western Conference in the Legends Cup, the Eastern Conference representative was unknown. One team had an untested quarterback and running back. But with perhaps the best defense in the history of the LFL, the other, a star-studded championship roster of veterans, led by a quarterback with two championship rings. From early on, you could cut the tension in the air with a knife as the two head coaches met prior to the start of the game. Coach Hack, Despite the success you've had in the regular season, you come into tonight's game as the number two seed. Is Nashville truly the better team? No. The stage was set. Two teams, both believing they are better than the other. In the first half, Nashville's number one ranked offense would face Chicago's number one ranked defense. On this night, it was clear that Chicago's defense would be more dominant. Not only Nashville's offense, but Chicago's as well. Behind what many believe to be an average quarterback would struggle against another great defense. As the final seconds of the first half would tick off the clock, two of the league's highest scoring offenses could not post a single point. I knew they were gonna be a great team. I mean, it's 0-0, anybody's game after this. I don't know, what's, I mean, who knows what's gonna happen, but it's a great game. At halftime, both teams sensed the urgency. Something had to give. The third quarter began just like the first half played out. Continued defensive dominance. <laughs> Caldwell back to pass again. Doesn't like what she sees and gets lit up. Let's go! Late in the third quarter, the balmy and humid Chicago night would take a toll on Nashville, a team that plays its key starters on both sides of the field. Nashville's fatigue would give way to the game's first score, as Chicago's improbable hero, Quincy Hewitt, would catch a 15-yard touchdown pass from fellow Aussie, Jane Caldwell. Wow, the Aussie, Quincy Hewitt, not known for her offensive prowess, having the game of her life tonight. Nashville's offense, who averaged nearly 60 points per game in the regular season, would finally score. Late in the third quarter, as Matheny would buy time with her feet and then found Randall in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, 
from Nashville. So that'll tie up this game six to six. The final 10 minutes of play would either take Chicago one step closer to yet another Legends Cup or have Nashville continue its improbable run. Everything you fucking have. I've said it all goddamn game. If they do run, keep them in bounds. The clock's going to run out. The first nine and a half minutes of the fourth quarter would go scoreless, with a mixture of good defense and self-inflicted mistakes. As champions often do, Chicago marred its most impressive drive of the game. Late, a six-play scoring drive, engineered by Caldwell and Thompson. Right there, she reaches out, it crosses the plane. Touchdown, Chicago. Chicago took a 12 to six lead with only 22 seconds remaining. The pressure shifted to the shoulders of perhaps the greatest offensive mind in league history and a two-time Legends Cup champion quarterback. And Jade's running the post, you're running the fade. Okay. And you're running the fade. And then what? Like the post on the right side. On the right. The drive would open with a drop by Daniel Hawkins but the Knights' offense would rally on the second play. Matheny finding the rookie, Whitney Palmer, on a 20-yard reception. This is fucking, this comes down to heart, and who wants it more? Then it would come down to a final play with only five seconds left in the season for either Chicago or Nashville. As Matheny dropped back, Uncharacteristically, Bethany threw into traffic and into the hands of an awaiting Kristen Morrison. Morrison returning the pick six to the house. The Chicago crowd celebration would be short-lived as a flag appeared on the field. The interception was not to be. Encroachment on a defense. Five-yard penalty will result in one untimed down. Nashville would live to play another down. Fucking believable! I'm fucking believable! What has been perhaps the greatest conference championship in history would come down to yet another final play. It could all come down to this play to decide who will represent the Eastern Conference in Legends Cup 2018. As Matheny dropped back, Dominique Malloy flashed wide open, but the five foot two quarterback did not see her, instead throwing into traffic. What followed was a Hollywood ending. Playing in her final game in Chicago, longtime Chicago safety, Allie Albert stepped in front of the pass and what followed was an unbelievable ending. A walk off pick six, preserving the win for Chicago. Oh, it doesn't get any better than this. I haven't had a pick six in so many years. That felt fucking amazing. I mean, our team, we just, we never quit. We got down, we never quit. It was, it was awesome. What a team win. Alberts and the league's most dominant defense would advance the Chicago Bulls to yet another championship game. For Nashville, a Cinderella-type season would come to an end. Chicago now heads to a stage that they are all too familiar with. Legends Cup 2018.